Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Anthony. Welcome back with Resigning with Phony Tony. Um, it's Sunday here and just wanted to talk about having goals and why is it effective or why you should have goals when it comes to reselling and end point. If you start an online business, why is it important to have goals? Also when it comes to reselling, a few tips on how to improve yourselves on eBay and any other platform that you use. And another thing, just people stay safe out there. Um, I know this virus will pass, but eventually we all have to just play it safe. If you can avoid going out, don't go out. And, you know, support our first responders by actually staying home, not crowding hospitals. Um, if you got minor symptoms and you know they're really not COVID related, stay home. Don't get desperate. Stay calm. And let's persevere. So when it comes to having goals, uh, why is it important for you to have a goal? And goals can serve as an underlying or guideline of where you want your store to go or what do you want this store or this business to do for you in the long run. Personally, my goal, just to share, is for this to be a full-time store. It's for this to eventually generate about a good maybe 5,000 sales per month on this business alone maybe between this year and the next year consistently and that's where I want to get to that's my goal because I want this to be a full-time job I want this to be a full-time business where I can manage my own time I don't have to report to anyone but myself and I still report to myself um, and I want this to be able to pay my bills eventually just make a living off of it and grow it even further but that's my goal and goals always change so whenever you set a goal remember it's a guideline so set it um, what do you want this store to do for you even if it's part time do you want it to pay for a certain amount of bills do you want it to just be a supplementary income so you can go on vacation it depends what do you want this store to do for you so set a goal and stick to it now when you set that goal, um, try to set it 10 times the amount that you, what you're actually aiming for. Because believe it or not, sometimes life will hit you hard and you might not reach that goal. But if you set it 10 times more than your expectation, then most of the times you will end up reaching your actual goal. And it calls the 10x rule, which I sometimes follow if you read on Grant Cardone and other gurus out there it's true if you do implement or you do set a goal 10 times higher than what your actual goal is you will most of the times hit your actual realistic goal now being that said I want you to write down your goal I want you to stick to your goal and every six months or every quarter analyze your goal and see if you're hitting it and if you're not hitting it, then it's time to hit the, the whiteboard. It's time to hit the drawing board and find out why you are not hitting that goal. What is stopping you from doing it? So, on to my next segment. Some tips on how to increase your sales on eBay. Now, when I first started out, I knew nothing about eBay. I did one major mistake, which is not look at gurus on how to actually improve myself I just winged it I mean I was 19 in college so I was just looking for some extra money because I needed to pay my bucks and I needed food so there you go that was my goal when I was in college so times have changed almost 10 years later my goal is to make this a full-time job so I actually had to do a lot of research on how to improve sales um, what makes mistakes I made at the end of the day it is a sales job it is a sales business even if it's reselling, it still sells. So, one tip when it comes to photos, um, you want to take good photos and good lighting. Uh, you want to make sure that the background of that photo is either white or one singular color. You don't want to include your feet in the shoe photo, you don't want to include your hand in an actual holding an item unless you're wearing a black glove or a blue glove or some type of glove to make it look professional because the more professional your photo looks the higher the chance 
the person buying it will be more comfortably buying it from you. If you put your, for example, if you take pictures of a shoe, which I'm a sneakerhead, if you shoe next to a radio or of other things and it looks like, you know, you just did it out of nowhere, you just put it next to a whole bunch of items, like you're doing a garage sale, most of the chance, even though the shoe is rare, people won't buy it from you. Or they'll doubt buying it from you because they don't know whether or not the shoe's messed up or, if it, or you know, if it actually looks like the picture. If you put it in a background, and I do recommend if you can afford it, and it's not that expensive, is getting a light box or a photography canvas, which you could set up as a white background and just put on some good lighting. In my case, I got a, a light box which is coming in. I was using a white background. Um, sometimes I would Photoshop the, the actual background, but being that case, Photoshopping does take a, quite a bit of time. And if I'm going to be listing a lot of items, sorry, if I'm going to be listing a lot of items, I'm drinking a monster, guys. So those gases might come once in a while. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Though I'm using like a uh, what is it, a cardboard background and it did work um, it's not the best background in the world but it looked neater than what I was doing before but I did get a white I did get a photography light box and I do recommend it if you can get one it's not that expensive uh, it's a good investment your sales will increase another tip when it comes to putting the title on the actual item do not and I mean do not put all of it in capital letters and the one reason why I say it is because when it is when people search for an item on Google Google will most of the times not show your item being sold on their search bars or when on their search because Google hates all capital letters if you ever did a Google advert you'll most you'll see that Google does not allow a title with all capital letters I mean that said, do not use all capital letters. Uh, if use capital letters in the beginning of each word, if you want to emphasize a word uh, or a name, just use the capital letters. You write in a regular name. Um, when it comes to titles, be specific. It is okay to include at the very end of the title the item number if you do have it categorized, and I do recommend to categorize. So if you do, just it at the end and that's for you that's not really for the customer they're not gonna really pay attention to that um, but do be very specific with your title uh, don't make it that generic um, include keywords that when people search up the item they'll be able to search up your item will appear in their actual search or one of the first ones to to appear and that's pretty much it just remember do not use all capital letters if you use all capital letters um, when people search up in Google, they're not going to find it. And Google's not going to show it. Another thing, research your items. When you are getting inventory in, and it depends on the source, whether you go out and buy it yourself in person, at, um, you know, lots, lots are pretty difficult. Um, so you have to know what you're doing when it comes to lots because it's a hit or miss. Especially in person, if you're buying in person lots, it's a hit or miss. But most of the time, if you're going out to flea markets, or if you're going out to, you know, statewide garage sales and stuff like that, or estate sales, uh, you want to research the items that you buy. You want to make sure there's a market for it. You want to make sure that people are buying those items and you're not going to just sit on it for like a whole year and not even sell it. So you want to research your items. Research your inventory. Find out when you can, cannot sell, what's being sold, at what price. Prices, you know, you, when you enter it and there's a lot of being sold, you're entering a price war. So do not, you know, do not buy something that is near the cost or your cost of goods is near the actual cost of what is going to be sold. Because if you do, you're not going to make that much profit, of course. Coming after fees and shipping fees and then your monthly eBay seller fees um, is going to pretty much drain whatever profit you made out of it. So research your items. Um, and don't just research the actual item, like enter it in the search bar and see what's being sold. Filter it out. Go to filter and go to sold and completed items. Make sure you click on sold and completed items and enter recent first. Enter most recent, filter it out to the most recent one and find out 
how much of them are being sold what's the demand for that product for that product that you're going to sell and now what is the general price is being sold at so you have an idea of whether or not it's worth getting an inventory load of any amount of products even when you buy in bulk even when you buy in bulk from a liquidation site it's a good idea to look at their manifest and see what you can actually sell and what cannot be sold so research 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 do your research if you don't do your research you're gonna find out like me if in the past when I made this mistake that I had eventually three boxes of phone cases that I have not gotten rid of and I actually lost on it because I had to sell it for about a dollar a piece at the local flea market or two dollars a dollar a piece at the local flea market so at the end of the day I actually had to take about a hundred dollar loss which was one of the which was a lesson a hard lesson that needed to be learned so do your research always do your research and another um, tip that I do have is when it comes to description um, you are selling an item so you want to describe you know put a nice description in there uh, bullet points uh, a nice heading for the description because you are selling this item the buyer has to read the description and you have to, and they have to be sold on buying it you know, I'm just not gonna read a description that says it looks nice uh, and then keep the generic description that eBay puts on there saying uh, the title condition is new and ship priority um, that doesn't sell in most that really doesn't sell you want to put a description of it it's nice it has this it has that it's it's you know whatever features it has and put it at the end ship of course you put shipped quick quick and fast so you want to put a nice description of what those items or what that item is you know do take your time with the description and make sure it's very detailed and it looks presentable that way the buyer you know the buyer comes to that item to your store and looks at that item you're comfortable buying the item because they were sold on it based on the description the photos and the title all right and another and another tip um, when it comes to shipping it is up to you whether you put free shipping or you let the customer pay for the shipping I personally have never done free shipping unless it's a big item and I sometimes factor in the shipping cost into the actual item and then put free shipping so and the reason why I tell you this is I never do free shipping is because I don't know where I'm shipping it to it could be to California or to Florida and sometimes when it comes to a small generic item um, a general item or small general item if I put free shipping um, shipping could cost me like ten dollars and I sold the item for ten dollars so <laughs> I pretty much lost on that right um, so I don't know so when it comes to a small item I usually don't do free shipping um, unless it's a big ticket item then yeah I would do free shipping I would just factor in maybe like 10 12 dollars into it just in case or depending on maybe like half of the shipping cost so that way I actually sell the item and I know there's room for profit in it so it's up to you it's up to you my advice would be you know do the math research it see if there's any profit in doing uh, free shipping or how quickly it would sell I know people that like to do free shipping because it attracts more customers that come in and you know oh free shipping and then they buy it um, it's like a benefit or something that they're getting out of the item or they think they're getting a good deal by doing free shipping um, and when it comes to Amazon sometimes you, you know you can't offer free shipping and Amazon sometimes does it for people so it's different when it comes to Amazon um, when it comes to eBay I personally don't do free shipping unless it's a big ticket item and that I know that even if I do free shipping and no matter where I send it to the most expensive place I'll still make a large profit out of it so it's up to you it's up to you generally do the math do the research no all capital descriptions no capital sorry titles and have a good description on the item and also one major tip when it comes to shipping weigh and measure your item it's very important that you weigh and measure your item if you don't 
most of the time you're gonna wing it and you're gonna find out by experience that you're gonna get a charge from USPS or UPS, whatever system you use, if you prepaid for your label, that says, you know, you have to pay a little extra because you underpaid for the shipping. Or you thought it was a certain amount and you went with it and when you actually went to the, actually went to the post office, if you go in person to ship it, you're gonna find out that it costs more than what you thought it was going to be. And you end up either losing or not making that much of a profit you thought you would make. So if you, you know, if you don't have a scale, get a scale, get a digital scale, um, measure it, measure the item. Now, when you measure the item, don't measure the actual item. Measure the potential pack, the you know, the potential package that you're going to be shipping out. That includes the, the actual box or envelope that you're going to be sending it out in. Measure that, and then weigh the item. And maybe add like a few ounces because of the box. Maybe one or two ounces. And that's gonna be kind of like your your actual shipping cost, because if you don't, like I said you're gonna pay more than you thought you were gonna pay for shipping, and you're gonna end up losing, and you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose in this business. And my last tip, customer service. When it comes to customer service, there will be returns. It's good that you handle some customer interactions to get still get good ratings. Um, some returns are inevitable because you can't, you know, there are customers that no matter what you do, they're always going to try to get away with something. So, you know, when it comes to customer service, be patient, uh, try not to rant, try to do the best possible customer service work that you can to keep, to keep a good rating because you want ratings are important in your store. You know, people, when they go to your store, they're going to actually look for your rating and see if. If you have like a three star, two star rating, you probably it's better yet not to sell again or open up another store because you're not gonna you're not going to that store pretty much got shot, you know. Um so yeah. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um uh, my weeks usually start on Sundays. I sometimes take Saturdays off. Um but I, if anything I work seven days a week. I never really take a day off. Uh, except to maybe go walk with Fiona, my dog. Um, that's about it. So it's important to take a day off. And that's an old business. Take a day off if you need it. Do you guys have any other questions? Any other advice you want to give the community or to anybody that's reselling? Um, drop it below in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like. And you know, if you think somebody else can you know, benefit off this advice, you know, share it on all platforms, share it on your Facebook, um, share me on Instagram, and, and subscribe, subscribe guys, subscribe, hit that notification, the little bell button, click on that, and stay tuned for my next upcoming videos on tips on how to increase your sales, I'll do little segments here and there, um, you know, I'm thinking about doing, you know, workout Wednesdays, you know, some people that resell, that work out at home, <laughs> Uh, especially stay stay at home people, I guess. And then um, you got I might do big ticket Thursdays, and then you know I'm thinking of some other segments to do so that way you know pump up you know you know provide some excitement and what's up. So everybody, thank you for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notifications button, and see you guys next time.